Uh, anything else? It's good. It's hot. That's all I know. Oh, man, I feel like dog was blasting hot. <laughs> <laughs> I was out there for like two minutes. I'm like, I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're all in for Jesus, except when it gets 112 degrees. <laughs> yes, remember that. And we stay in the air conditioner. We do. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to The Wrap. As we discuss the weather, like everybody else does here in southeast Missouri, it is scorching hot. and well, Nice warm weather. Nice warm weather. But just remember, on Sundays, it's cool in here. <laughs> That's all you got to know. Yeah. yeah. Now, as long as air conditioners work. <laughs> as long as air conditioners. Yeah. Good point. So Fair don't, point. Don't, uh, don't, don't curse, don't the, air curse the air conditioners. Yep. Okay. My name is Darren Deloach. I'm one of the pastors here at Connection Point Church. And with me, as always, Lee Pastor, Chris. <laughs> and I wasn't here this weekend, so He's a I, I did watch online. So, And uh, I had to take my kid to college. So. Yeah. Big weekend for you guys. Way Micah, it goes. Yep. She got her own campus. Yep. And it was good. Yeah. It was good. It was good. She's gonna be. You she's gonna be fun. Uh, Life Church campus. I did end up Life Church. It was good. It was Craig interesting. Rochelle yep, he was, was there. Yep, it was one good. Multi sites. Yep. No, it was a good. It was a good morning. It was packed house. I bet it know. was. They only have six hundred seats in that one place, mm, but yeah. it was probably five hundred ninety eight people there. It's probably for sure. <laughs> and um, and so, but anyways, it's good to be back home, and we're going to just look at your Sunday message. From as for me in my house, second week, right? Yep, week yep. number two, and it was discussing a house of worship. Right, and but you had a plot twist, didn't you? It wasn't about music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, worship is more than music, what? and that's something that we are going to have to learn. Worship is this entirety of our surrender. Uh, and yeah, it, it was fun to watch facial expressions when I brought out the <laughs> two sided coin. You know, that when we think of worship, we're thinking about music and expression, but serving yep. is also just as much worship, and that's right there in verse 14. Therefore, fear the Lord, which is not the terrifying fear, which mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll get to, but then it's to worship him. The word worship there actually means to work for or to serve. So, right. yeah, absolutely. We, and, we, we went a little deeper than just music. So since you uh, brought it up, that was going to be – where we're going to go, of course. So the word. I kind of had a feeling that's where yeah. you were going. And so since it seems like that might have been the big part of your message, so we'll we'll, we'll recite here for a moment. Right. Um, fear comes up. And in that verse, you just said now it was it's not the uh, the atypical like horror film fear mm -hmm. or your fear of heights or snakes or whatever. Uh, so if you had to describe Biblical fear, fear or the fear of God mm -hmm. to somebody who like totally foreign, never picked up the Bible in their life. And they go, man, why would I want to, to be a part of a, anything that asked me to be afraid or fear their God? Yeah. Yeah. I would have to explain to them that it's about admiration. Mm -hmm. It's uh, admiring the God who created the heavens and the earth who created you, who knew you before you was ever formed in your mother's womb, Psalm 139, who has a plan for you, Jeremiah 29, 11, and that this awesome, mighty God who created the heavens and the universe just by speaking the word mm -hmm. wants to know you personally and have an intimate relationship with you, who wants to be a father to you and you be his sons and daughters. And, and when you capture that, it should bring you to a position of awe mm -hmm. of God and admiration and respect he is god so we honor and respect his authority but even deeper than his authority just the respect of of, of the idea that god wants to know you and you to know him yeah i mean i don't think most of us reflect long enough on the power of that how how awesome is it that God wants to know you and he wants you to know him back? What's a relationship with you? No other religion in the world declares this, by the way, no. only Christianity. And, uh, you know, some folks say, well, well, yeah, that's Jesus, but what about the Old Testament? We're reading out the Old Testament in this yep, series. Even in the Old Testament, and someone came up to me in the courtyard Sunday and said, uh, well, isn't the Old Testament all about, like, laws and and judgments and, you know, the, the weightier, harder judgment piece. And I, and I explained to him, I said, you will find a lot of legalities mm -hmm. in the Old Testament because you got to remember they didn't have what we consider law. 
Mm-hmm. They didn't have governing authorities at this time. God was their governing authority, so he had not only the spiritual implications, but you also had to have moral implications yeah. to keep down the chaos, right? But even there, God says to them that he wanted to be their personal God. Right. And, uh, yeah, to me, anytime I've shared the gospel with someone, even someone who doesn't know anything about the Bible, mm-hmm. Is I want I want them to see that the God who created them is a personal God and he wants a personal relationship with them. And when you realize that, to fear Him is to respect Him to such a place where you want to follow Him. Yep. You want to serve Him. You want to know Him. A, a weak example of that, I think, is like whenever you meet whenever you meet the person that you you know you should feel this way. The person you fall in love with and eventually mm. marry, it make their old expression made you weak in the knees. Yeah. Right. You know, it's a little, it's a little bit of fear and trembling going on there. Cause you, you know, sure. you, you're so, you're so in awe by the moment or by that person or every time you're around them, it's like, you're almost, almost shaky. Right. Mm-hmm. You're not afraid. You're not scared per se, no. but you're, you're like, but you want to please them. Yeah. You want to do everything you do. You want to make, to honor them. Mm-hmm. And so it's similar. I mean, that's a very weak you analogy. Lift them up. But, but it's similar to right. me when I read. I know when I read the word in Hebrew, that's the word. It, when he goes on, it lists all these uh, descriptors to it, and and one of them is it's like whenever you catch the eye of your of, of your love of your love, mm-hmm. and so the uh, and so it, to me that kind of resonates a little bit. It's really hard to describe that one to somebody who's not. Yeah, I'll I'll say this. Uh, as someone who doesn't have the Holy Spirit in them, it's really hard to describe those things. I think sometimes mm-hmm. it's like trying to explain some, why you love your wife, you know, to somebody. Right, right. It's like you really can't know until you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I, right. and I hate that that that's true, but I think that is kind of <laughs> true. Or I could be way off base, but hey, uh, you go on and you begin to talk, you read in, and you begin to talk about uh, uh, serving, like you just said earlier, because worship is is so much more of course than than music and it's in fear or reverence or that all like you said before it should create this desire to please Mm -hmm. right god and so in one of the ways we can please god is having this this almost built-in dna change in our heart that says we are now begin to serve others yeah i mean you think about it it doesn't matter even from childhood, who you honored, who you respected, when they said, hey, would you go do this for me? Yep. Hey, would you go over there for me? Hey, would you say this for me? We would do it, yep. right? We would jump on it because we loved them, we honored them, we trusted them, we wanted to please them. How much more should we with God? Yep. If we truly understand that God wants a personal relationship with us, that he's the creator of the universe, that he loves us and has a plan for us, then I believe what Joshua is teaching us here is not only to hold him in all in reverence, but that should that should automatically lead us to a position of wanting to serve him. Right. And it's not because we have to. It's not because God's going to strike us down if we don't. No. It, it doesn't come from compulsion. It's even like um, when Paul talked to the church in Corinth about giving an offering to mm. the church in Jerusalem, right? Right. He says God loves a cheerful giver. He doesn't want you to give out compulsion. Right. Well, if he's that way with money, he's that way also with yep. our serving of our gifts right. and talents in his kingdom, right? So, um, yeah, it should become a natural aspect for us. Mm. I, I want to serve him because look at what he did for me. Look what he did for us. He sent his son Jesus. He woke us up this morning. One yeah. of the most impacting verses in the Bible on my life has been Zephaniah 3.17. And I love telling people this because there's a lot of folks who are like not real um, comfortable with their Bible yet. And they're like, I didn't know there was a Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Where is that? Zephaniah 317 says, the Lord your God is in your midst. The mighty one he will save. He rejoices over you. Yes, he rejoices over you with singing. Yep, he sings over you. That's and, awesome. you know, I think about me growing up in church my whole life. I've always been taught to sing to the Lord, worship the Lord. No one for years ever told me that he actually sung over me. And when you mm-hmm. when you capture that, that the God of the universe wants a relationship with you and he sings over you, why would not want to do whatever he asks? I mean, I want to honor God like that. I want to serve him. Mm-hmm. It becomes a pleasure, if you will. And in doing that, we serve him, and we know this. He's called us to be his hands and feet, so... Yep. Sometimes that means we got to serve others. That's right. And in serving others, we're actually serving right. him because he gave us his mission. 
funny whenever how all these things tie back together. And again, we plan this, but don't always plan this. Yeah, we it's don't like, plan all the details. No, the Holy like Spirit the, does that. We just recently came out of a series where we taught the Shema, right? Mm -hmm. And and that word listen is how it opens, right? <laughs> and what is listen? And if you and that word literally because there's no word for obey, right? And so he's literally everything you just talked about was mm -hmm. the Shema. It's like yeah. because that was a elder or a a a, a rabbi or a teacher or a or a mentor speaking to you, yep. and just because and because of the respect you had for them, the, the Shema would mean you. If you listen, if you they told you something, you just did it mm -hmm. because you wanted to do that. You wanted to please them. And I love it when the Holy Spirit connects that. all that yeah. together, right? So that the wasn't Kamal, playing, I promise you. The Shema, it. rather, uh, Hero Israel. Yep. And listening and obeying are the same, same in thing. Hebrew. Yep. And uh, the, we did. God didn't send us. We talked about this last week. God didn't send us a book out of heaven. Mm -mm. He taught us, first of all, through... Oral yep, tradition, mentor, passing down to mentee, and teacher to a student, family member to child, passing on the word of God before it was ever written down. So, yeah, you're exactly right. This is this is the pattern, and it's beautiful to see it when it's coming together. And the um, and I know this whole year is based around the whole idea of of hearing the voice of God, mm -hmm. but you can't hear the voice of God unless you listen mm -hmm. and then, and probably won't speak to you a whole lot unless he sees that you are obeying. Mm. <laughs> Which is where we went yes. yesterday. And uh, of course, when you get to that part of the sermon, the room's going to tighten up. Yeah. Um, and I, I felt an incredible sense of burden in my spirit uh, when I'm preaching on that because of the weight of it. Mm -hmm. Not not just for the congregation, for myself too, for all of us who want to honor and love the Lord. And I can't get this phrase out of my mind, and I shared it from the stage yesterday. The reason we obey or the reason we should be obeying is not because we're in that terror fear of the Lord, right. but because of our respectful fear of the Lord. You don't want to hurt someone you love. Right. Uh, you know, last week on the wrap, I mentioned how this week we would be getting more into the discipline side. Mm -hmm. And uh, though I didn't use this illustration yesterday, this is what was in the back of my mind. You know, growing up, uh, whenever I didn't get by with nothing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I always got caught, never got by. My mama would say, the reason you get caught is because God's not going to let you go. <laughs> you know, so yeah. Yeah, she always told me it was the Lord getting to let me get caught. And I'd be like, God, what's up with this? But. I always, All my friends I always told got my kids stuff. that that's the Holy Spirit telling me. <laughs> yeah, what I told them. That's God, right. God told me. That's what I was told. <laughs> but instead of getting bitter at God for it, uh, and, and my grandparents were the best at this, they they were able to share discipline in a way that they gave me a heart for God. Mm -hmm. And it was more of, honey, you don't want to hurt the Lord who loves you like that and be disobedient to him. And, and, and even as a kid, man, that would be like, that was the worst part of the discipline. It wasn't a spanking or a grounding or any of that. It was, man, I don't want to hurt God. Mm. He's done too much for me. And that was the atmosphere. I believe that's the motive that Joshua is pushing for. I believe that's what Deuteronomy is pushing for. If we love him, we'll want to walk in his ways. That's right. And we read Deuteronomy 10 yesterday. What does God, what does God want from us? To fear the Lord. Yep. To walk in his ways. To love him and to serve him with all our heart and soul. Um, man, when you love the Lord, you don't want to hurt him. You don't want to disobey him. You don't want to disappoint him. That's right. Right. That's why we obey. And sin is this weird poison um, that it, 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 it leads you uh, to where the point where it takes, it begins with this. It doesn't, everybody thinks a lot. There's very few of us are in like, we, we don't, by and large, we haven't just shot somebody. We haven't killed somebody. We haven't done these massive, mm -hmm. um, um, obscene like uh, sins. We have a lot of closeted sin, right? Mm -hmm. But those things begin to chip away, slowly but surely, and uh, and and so and they and they begin to damage our relationship with God because it's not so much He hasn't went anywhere. It's like the guilt or the shame. Uh, all of those things begin to, uh, to 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 tear into you, and it's funny how that works, or sad how that works. Uh, you, we watch it even in our own lives. You begin to begin to avoid things of God, right? And then as you avoid things of God, now you no longer can hear. And then when you no longer can hear, <laughs> then there's exactly a cycle right. of death that you can't get out of. That's right. Until you admit the point that you are sinning, <laughs> yeah. or 
get to this point like you were talking, if you live a point of worship to where you recognize, because David, you know, it's funny we mentioned worship and sin because there was no greater sinner really than David. David mm-hmm. was an adulterer, murderer. I mean, <laughs> he was on top, but he was also a worshiper. A man after God's, own, God's heart. own heart. And he was quick and he had, and he would always come back to that reverence, that, mm-hmm. that all, yeah, I messed mm-hmm. up, Lord. And the Lord would always mm-hmm. gracefully forgive yep. him and still do the things he did through them. Mm-hmm. I think we can learn from that. Oh, I do too. Um, I think sometimes we forget that every sin, and it doesn't matter if it's that little bitty sin that we think really isn't that big of a deal or that big monstrous sin that we all say, oh, that's terrible. Every sin comes from a seed of rebellion. Yep. And it's rooted in pride. Yep. Every sin deals with rebellion and pride. And we, we rebel because our pride of our sinful nature says, I want to do it my way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so really, I mean, we, we're guilty, and it doesn't matter what it is. If we've sinned, we're guilty because we, through pride, rebelled against something we know was not the way God wanted to go, right? And like you said a moment ago, and I think that was so good, I hope everybody caught exactly what you were saying, God doesn't go anywhere when we sin. No. Nope. And after you become a Christian, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't leave every time you sin. Mm -hmm. He's still in there. He's sealed inside of you. Yep. Um, But he's not going to allow sin to remain in his presence. That's right. Because that's totally uh, in opposition to God and his holiness Mm -hmm. and his love for you. Rebellion and pride is the two things that God wants to get out of us, right? Right. So he's going to chasten us. He's going to discipline us. He's going to convict us of that sin. Not because he's angry, but because he loves us and he's trying to get us back into fellowship. And what happens is, like you said, guilt begins to rise up. The pride in us doesn't want to repent. I mean, how many times have we held on to a sin knowing what we need to do with it, but we didn't want to give up that sin? You know, so yesterday I asked a question. Which do you love more? Do you love God or do you love your sin? Because that's really what we're dealing with at that moment. And we've all been there when you don't want to give up that sin. And so now you feel guilty and shame. And instead of running to the Father, yep. you mentioned it, we run away from the Father. Right. So what did that sin just do? It put up a barrier mm-hmm. in our relationship. And now we're losing the fellowship. Doesn't mean you've lost your salvation. Nope. You're still in the family, still loved but you're out of fellowship. You don't have the flow of the Holy Spirit working. Yep. You don't you don't feel the presence of the Lord. You don't have the peace that passes yep. understanding, the joy of the Lord. Yep. Because there's something in between you and him. And until we repent of it and give up our pride over that issue. It's funny though how that word we began with with fear, how it turns from that reverence and awe to a different kind of fear when you're in sin. It becomes, mm. you know, it becomes, becomes, it becomes the terror, the fear, terror fear, the, the fear that like that judgment. horror that it is judgment. I think a lot of times it's the enemy in your ear telling you God doesn't love you anymore. Mm-hmm. You've, 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 you've done this. That's you've exactly done that. what he says. And so he said, you know, he's angry with you. And God so now that reverence turns into this, into this, like, this, like this scaredness. Yes. You're scared of, the, of God. You're scared of his presence. Mm-hmm. Scared what it's going to lead to. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the great big lie. And, uh, and so, so good. But uh, and then you eventually you wrap it up with your big takeaway. So if you had to take your big takeaway and 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 unpack that a little bit, how would you go about doing that again? Yeah, to to create the atmosphere in our homes for ourselves and the people around us of truly being a house that worships the Lord through reverence and all and surrender. You know, serving Him. It all comes down to having a life completely surrendered. Mm-hmm. If our life is surrendered to his lordship, if our life is surrendered to him, then when we sin, we're going to repent because we're surrendered. We're not going to be a slave to sin anymore. We're going to repent of it. It's not easy. But a life that is surrendered. And the reason we surrender is because we keep going back to the grace of God that transformed our heart. You keep going back to the God who saved you and forgave you. This morning I was reading uh, Psalm 77. And it just struck me again, you know, David or, or the writer, not David, but the uh, the writer of Psalm seventy seven. He's he's in a low place. Yep. <clears throat> he feels dark and despair. He's wondering where God's hand is, 
and the way he refreshed himself was at the end of the psalm, he went back and started reminding himself of what God did in the past. Yep. Uh, sometimes in the moment we have to stop and look back and see what God has done, how he saved us, how yep. he loved us, how he's been there for us. And even though in the moment we may be struggling, the fact that we can look back and see the transformation mm -hmm. God took place helps us to go back and resurrender our lives, which is a beautiful form of worship. A surrendered life because of a transformed heart leads to worship. And you said it, it's not about perfection. You're still mm -hmm. going to, you just mentioned the psalmist and David. We mentioned him earlier. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they would they would remember, uh, they would be angry with God sometimes. They literally mm -hmm. would question God. Mm -hmm. um, they would get in a place where they would uh, uh, doubt. Um, all those things are human nature. Mm -hmm. I think that's something we're born with, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Adam. And yeah. uh, and so, uh, so those things are all natural. So I've met so many people who have allowed those things, those thought process, because they doubt, because they mm -hmm. wonder, because they get angry, because all those things, they they begin to question their own salvation because Absolutely. of it. And that's and that's if you if you if you think that's going to go away just because you have Christ yeah. in you, you're wrong. <laughs> You know, one one of the devil's great lies, I believe, that he has infiltrated Christianity with, is this ideology of Perfection. perfection yep like we're going to be able to grow to such a point where we don't deal with our flesh anymore that's right and, and we forget to go back and look at the scriptures none of the apostles reached <laughs> sinless perfection no the apostle paul in one of his last letters to timothy before he dies he's sitting there feeling guilty over his past and going i feel like i'm the chief among yep. all the sinners yep but then he recounted how god called him and saved him and called him into the ministry and, and he knew that his life was surrendered. I mean, he would just say, I, if God can use me to save people, I'll, whatever he wants to do, you know, was right. the attitude of Paul. And, uh, you know, this idea that, you know, Christians don't battle the flesh anymore <laughs> is totally foreign to Scripture. Understanding that God isn't looking for perfection, he's looking for authenticity. Mm. And being an authentic Christian is not a perfect Christian it is a person who battles every day. When we fall down, we repent, yep. and we resurrender our lives, and we get back up. In fact, our worship team's just started doing a, a song just recently called "Resurrender." Yeah, and, and that's got to be the theme of every Christian. It's daily resurrendering Re ourselves in worship to the Lord. Yeah, no, because the, the Bible is very clear and is very gracious in the fact that, I don't know how people miss it, we put them on stained glass windows, yeah. but the men and women of the Bible were some very imperfect humans. Absolutely. Who every had every form of frailty that you can think of. And it's the crazy thing about it, and the cool thing about it, we'll end with all this, uh, the cool thing about, and I've written about this before, but your frailty, that weakest point of your whole existence, is the very thing that God's going mm -hmm. to use to his for His glory. Because it, it, the things that we He doesn't like public speaking, so that's why He public <laughs> gets what to do for a living. <laughs> uh, and so there's going it, to it's your weakest aspect of who you are. The thing, probably the thing you hate about yourself mm -hmm. the most, is the place God will be found yeah. almost every time. Absolutely. And so to think that we're that He's going to get rid of all that. And just make you some rock star, constantly 100% <laughs> solid, no sin in your life. Yeah. You know, your marriage is perfect. And if you have a, a wayward thought, your wife will know it. And all, please, <laughs> it doesn't exist. Anybody tells you that, they're lying. I'm telling you right now, they're lying. Um, but the Bible's full of those people. Moses was imperfect. David was imperfect. Paul was imperfect. The rest of the disciples were all like, just normal guys, mm -hmm. normal girls, mm -hmm. and they messed up all That's the time. That's absolutely true. Now, Paul says, do we celebrate in it? No. We get up. We yeah, you it. don't celebrate your sinfulness. No. You're constantly it. fighting against yep. it. It's a war. Uh, you don't give in to it. You don't make excuses for it. But you accept the fact that you are broken yep. through sin and that we are pushing to be like Christ. And when we fall down, we repent and get back up. You don't stay in it. You keep pushing forward. We're not promised perfection. We're promised victory. And there's a huge There you go. That's anyways. huge. That's huge. All right, guys. Well, that's uh, we'll conclude the wrap. See, I didn't say wrap the wrap. We're going to conclude the wrap <laughs> with that. And so we hope we'll see you next week. I know we'll we'll conclude the message. Is it? We got one, two well, more weeks. 
We have two more weeks. Two more weeks. What I thought. Yes. So two more weeks. Uh, this is, uh, um, uh, as for me and my house, I never can keep up with the totals. I don't know why I can't do that, but I can't. So we have a couple more weeks of <laughs> this message series. a photographic memory, but it's not can't, with it's, math. It's just not math. Math stinks. It's terrible. <laughs> Words, great with it. But so for next, we'll see you next week. We'll get out of here. I'm wrapping the wrap right now. It's wrap. It's a wrap. We're wrapped out by wrapping. Wrap.